it was the festival of lights when prabhakar dhareshwar and rama bai became proud parents to a baby girl being connoisseurs of music the name the child lalit after the beautiful early morning raga when i was a child my father was very fond of hindustani classical music and uh, instead of singing lullabies they would uh, put these 3 uh, minute records of um, narayan rao uh, vyas and vinayak bua patwardhan and many of the small 3 minute records that they had in their uh, possession it was not just music she also excelled in academics and sports lalit dhareshwar rao a woman of substance who trailblazed to become the most outstanding exponent of the agra atroli gharana i think i was very blessed to have uh, parents grandparents a family like i grew up with that i was uh, fortunate to grow be born into they were not single minded in any one direction and uh, they were very keen to expose me to as many different uh, influences art culture education as uh, possible so um, coming from such a background I think I was very lucky to be exposed to all these uh, influences as a child. Music was not just a pastime with this family. In fact, it was a passion. when fayaz khan sahab used to come to perform at the dashera uh, celebrations in mysore so at one such concert since i couldn't be left alone at home i was taken because my mother was also very keen to listen and they tell me that uh, i didn't make a noise i didn't disturb them and i sat right through uh, listening to the whole concert looking back on it i believe that that was when the die was cast and uh, agra gharanas held me strongly in um, in not in chains but uh, enraptured with the gharana or i have even been uh, told that i have been obsessed with the gharana living in malleshwaram considered the cultural oasis of bangalore Lalit went to the local school and began to learn Kathak from the most sought after guru Maya Rao. When I saw these children yawning or feeling bored I would ask them to make little combinations of those with the mudras and Lalita would be the first one to put up her hand and do something and she was very imaginative and had a good sense of rhythm. and then after that we parted company because i went away from bangalore and she went and then suddenly i was so happy to know the child that i just taught tathe the that has become a celebrated musician uh, my father was given quarters in the minerva mills though that was uh, out of the way and uh, outside um, very difficult f- as far as communication was concerned coming and going now when i look back my mother must have been a very brave woman because there was no drinking water at home we had no uh, uh, municipal taps at home so she, uh, she, uh, she had to go to the uh, railway station where there was a public tap and uh, bring water from there and uh, she she bought me a small little uh, pot uh, and she she had a bigger one and with the help of her maid the three of us used to make uh, trips to the railway station and back in the morning and in the evening of course they would make two or three trips i would go just once in the morning and once in the evening 
it was like a picnic for me because I couldn't go to school because there was no uh, school nearby. Because I couldn't go to school, she had to uh, keep me, uh, you know, engaged in various activities. To keep her occupied, she was involved in other activities. When Lalith was nine years old, she restarted her schooling at Safaya Convent School and excelled her way through academics and sports. She was initiated to the world of Hindustani music under the tutelage of Pandit Rama Rao Naik, the doyen of the Agra Gharana. As a person, when you looked at him, uh, he had a wonderful smile and uh, he was not a f forbidding character. You know, there are some people who give you a feeling that, you know, they are... Uh, he, put you sp he put even a child very much at ease. But personally, he came from a very orthodox um, Madhva background. And uh, I had been so far not exposed to uh, this sort of aspect of life at all. So when he came uh, to our house, he wouldn't sit on the carpet. He wouldn't sit on a chair which had upholstery and uh, he wouldn't eat food in our house. And I found it all uh, slightly, uh, not disturbing, but I was perplexed that, you know, what is happening? And uh, that was when I was, uh, I became aware that different people have different values, different ways of living. Ram Rauji used to play the tabla and teach. But he felt that it was better if, I, when I practiced, I should get used to singing with a person who was only a, a tabla player, not a teacher. So he requested uh, the Tatre Garuji to come to um, Minerva Mills. Because I was too small to come here. Uh, Garuji always felt that I had to do it. And if, he, if I went wrong somewhere, he said, he would say, Sariyak bandila, tirga maadu, tirga maadu, tirga maadu. And uh, it was, uh, I am indebted to him because he was the one who gave me that feel for not just beats or tal, but lie for what are the highs, how do you change. Um, you know, he sowed that seed of um, the understanding of lie and tal in me. Lalit's tryst with destiny was just about to begin. It was in 1954 that Lalit gave her first performance at a private home in Bangalore. My parents-in-law said that uh, after hearing us sing, why not give her a little exposure and expose her to a small audience? And that's how this concert came about. I do remember that she had a hair up in two pigtails with bows. A year later, Lalit, all of 12 years, performed Rag Lalita Gauri at the Bangalore Sangeet Sabha. Though just over 14, she won the first prize at Sursingar Sunsets All India Classical Music Competition in Mumbai that was held for budding musicians under the age of 30. She also became Hindustani Sangeet's youngest entrant at the Swami Harida Sammelan the same year. It was a defining moment for the Agra Gharana itself, as Lalit displayed exceptional talent at a tender age. Sangeeta Sadhaniya Jyote Lalita Kridanganadalu Tumba Chatuvatike Vetti Agidru Throw Ball Athletic Agidru Javelin Esata Dali Ike National Champion Agidru Nudu Governor. With a record performance that was unbroken for 17 years, Lalit and her mother were unaware of this record 
until it appeared in the newspapers. Though Lalit chose to go into engineering, it was a difficult time as women were not given admission at government engineering college. Going to Maharani's was a big culture shock for me. Not for very long, but initially. Because we were six in my class and here we were 60 or 70 in my class in uh, Maharani's college. But Maharani's had its own charm and its own uh, uh, good points. And this was the time when uh, I represented uh, Mysore State, at that time it was Mysore, for uh, national basketball championships for women and we won the championship in uh, Jaipur. She took up BSc in Physics and Maths and then pursued engineering from the Indian Institute of Science. And I got admission in Berkeley and uh, in uh, Saskatchewan and uh, Fredericton. Saskatchewan and Fredericton in New Brunswick I was mainly interested because they had uh, courses in biomedical electronics. And uh, so I went to Fredericton on a full scholarship and uh, teaching assistantship. And then of course music totally faded to the background. In the department I was the only uh, girl student doing uh, postgraduate masters. But life was made much much easier because there were six or seven graduate students who were doing electrical engineering and uh, power communications and all so and we all had a same the same department so they were literally uh, saviors and uh, those friendships that I formed with them have lasted even till today because even now when they come here they come and visit us sometimes when we were walking down from the dormitory to the engineering department the whole place would be iced over and you would slip and fall and you in one place your books in one place, something else in one place, some bones broken sometimes. And I would sit to my, think to myself, why did I have to come here when I could have sat comfortably in Bangalore? I mean, these, it's not that these thoughts never did come across, they did. But in the end, it was worth it. She completed MSCE with distinction in 1967 and returned to India. Music had taken a back seat for all these years until Jaivant entered her life. I was working in Madras and uh, I was staying in the YMCA. One fine morning I got a message from uh, somebody to say that uh, Lalit Dhareshwar is singing in somebody's house. Would you like to come? I was very fond of classical music. I used to listen to a lot of Hindustani classical. So I said, of course, Sunday morning, why not? So I went in there, and there I saw Lalit for the first time. I was a cricketer in college and even in school, maybe because of my height, but nobody, but nobody could get me out clean bold. I was often LBW, I was caught, I was run out, I was stumped, but never bold. I think I was covering the wicket. So there I go and hear Madam Lalit Rao, who was then Miss Lalit Dhareshwar. I had heard the name but never heard her singing. And she started with her namesake Rag, Rag Lalit. It was so engrossing. I mean, I had heard Bhimsen Joshi, I had heard so many others. Usually my exposure was Bhimsen Joshi and uh, Bade Gulam Ali Khan. And here Lalit, 20 plus, singing like a professional. I said, my God, this is very interesting. So that for the first time in my life, I was clean bold for a duck. I had two weeks before going to Delhi. At that time, Lalit's father came and approached me and saying, would you be prepared to consider marrying Lalit? My first question was, have you asked her? He said, yes, I have asked her. So would you, be, would you consider? So I pretended to look a little sober and serious. Well, well, you see, well, why not, why not? But she was in Canada, I was in India, and then my 
would be father in law immediately said let us announce the engagement i said wait a minute but she is in canada i am in uh, india how do we have the engagement no 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 don't worry you can get engaged to her photograph so that is how my engagement was to her photograph after their marriage in 1967 having moved to delhi jaivant influenced lalit to follow her passion even at the cost of giving up a lucrative engineering career it was then that pandit dinkar kaikini reignited her musical skills and put her back on track i did get a job with ibm but uh, i decided they were not willing to transfer me to bombay and i decided that if you get married then you have to uh, be together as a family the next milestone was in 1969 when lalit and jaivant shifted to bombay and there began a very emphatic phase of her musical journey one of the most sought after gurus of the agra gharana padma bhushan kadim hussein khan saab further chiseled lalit's talent by his trademark stamp of discipline and perfectionism they had a habit of having what is called ganda bandhan that means they officially accept you as a student so uh he said uh, and usually you give a guru we didn't know what this whole uh, ceremony was about but he said ne kuch ne thoda phal le aao aur ek mala le aao aur aapke ghar mein ganesh ji ka murti hai wo le aao aur ek agarbatti le aana and some sweet so we got all that and you won't believe uh, he first uh, did a small namaskar to ganesh ji and then he said some prayers whatever he did and they have this um, thread which they tie on your hand that is officially accepting you as a student it was a very small ceremony in some cases becomes a very big ceremony he got so attached to me rather i got so attached to him that one fine morning lalit got a little upset with him he said khan saab shagird to main hu magar pasand karte hain aap unko ye kyun are are lalita gussa mat karo tu to meri shagird hai magar ye mera beta hai that was the kind of bond i personally had with khan saab apart from his uh, great affinity for lalit he was really a bright light in my life and a major influence on my music because he taught me to think he taught me to innovate within a broad outline and uh, he also taught me that whatever you sing should not be a patchwork it should merge with your uh identity suddenly he'll think of a cheesa which comes to his mind he will come back and first teach lalit what happened was he used to think about various cheesas he was a great composer himself he would teach a rag to lalit and in that rag there will only be a vilambit cheese it was quite common in those days you just sing a vilambit vilambit is the slow cheese and then stop but it traditionally in a khyal you have to sing a vilambit and a drut so after learning the vilambit lalit would uh, tell him khan saab drut drut sikhaiye ha ah, isme drut nahi hai acha khan saab to main ye ga, raag public mein nahi gaungi are kyu vilambit to sikhaya hai nahi saab agar drut khyal nahi hai to main wo nahi gaungi acha to ek banana padega so and then we'll forget about it one fine evening at 9 9:30 knock 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 which is not the day on which he normally comes he opened the door ha sir aap ha ha main aaya hu bat bat jab mujhe ek gilas pani de do so gave him a glass of water and wondering why he has come then he picks out a bus ticket from his pocket on the back of which he has scribbled in urdu the drut composition of that very rag abhi mujhe yaad aa gayi bus mein to maine socha ghar pe aake aapko sikha dunga ek bar to sikha diya na फिर मुझे याद करने की जरूरत नहीं आप याद करेंगे तो इट इज सेफ इन योर हैंड्स दैट वाज द कॉन्फिडेंस ही हैड इन ललित आई हैड हर्ड अबाउट हर गेटिंग द फर्स्ट प्राइज एंड परफॉर्मिंग इन द प्रेस्टीजियस स्वामी हरिदास संगीत सम्मेलन इन 1957 
So we got married and came to Bombay in 1969. We had to approach the same Sursingar Sansad. So I, I went and approached the director called Brijnarayan and said, uh, do you remember in 57 somebody sang and got a first prize and sang alongside Kesar Bhai? Ha ha ha, wo Lalit, Lalita aisa koi hai. No, that, she is my wife. Would you consider giving her a concert in uh, Swami Haridas Sangeet Sammelan? He said, ye nahi hoga. Hamara rule hai, agar das saal koi nahi gaye yahan, to she will have to start from what is called Kalke Kalakar Sangeet Sammelan. That is tomorrow's musicians Sangeet Sammelan. I said, but Brijnarayan ji, she has won the first prize and already performed in Swami Haridas. Maybe, but this is our rule. So after coming to the pinnacle at the age of 14, coming right down and starting from the bottom rung of the ladder, I felt a little sad about it, but she didn't mind. So she sang there. It was such a thumping success that she was immediately awarded the title called Surmani by Sur Sangar Sansan. And after that, she never looked back. Very next year, she performed in Swami Haridas Sangeet Samelan. First, it was a duet. And then the very next year, again, a solo. And she has never looked back. More and more and more concerts started coming her way. More and more she started getting admirers, all kinds of people. Being a mother and a musician was less challenging thanks to the immense support from a band of relatives and with Jaivant always at her side, Lalit steadily climbed the pinnacle of success. Her unwavering dedication to the gharana gave her the clarity of purpose and freedom to dream and to continuously excel for her ever eager audiences. All the nuances, all the physicality, all the robustness, but in a feminine avatar, Unari Shilab Sokumari. और मुझे कालिदास की याद आ रही है आपको हंसी आएगी उन्होंने पार्वती की तुलना कांचन पद्म से की जो कमल क्योंकि सोने की तरह कठोर हो और कमल की तरह सुकुमार हो तो उनकी जो आवाज थी उनकी जो आएगी थी मुझे कांचन पद्म की याद दिला दें जस्ट एस शी हैड एस्टैब्लिश्ड हरसेल्फ as one of बॉम्बे's प्रोमिनेंट वोकलिस्ट्स जयवंत वाज ट्रांसफर्ड टू दिल्ली after 14 years under the tutelage of Khan Saab, it was an emotional moment of separation from her beloved Guru. Jaivan got transferred to Delhi and my uh, belief has always been that the family comes first, no matter what it is. And uh, he was going there, it would have been an uh, improvement in his career, a very big fillip to his career. So I was heartbroken, so was Jaivan because we were both miserable to leave Khansa. Bundle of emotions had surpassed, but shift to Delhi gave Lalit Rao a new perspective to branch out and groom herself as a performer. The first thing that attracted me was the owner quality. Wo golai, wo ekdam jise kehte na, to hit at the bull's eye. Each and every note was so pure and so perfect. Lalit's Rao was a personification of the saying, Vidya Dadati Vinayam. I must have played with at least 200 artists. 2 to 250, but she is one of the very few with whom I have always enjoyed accompanying. Because our rapport is so good and I have uh, the, the innumerable uh, concerts I have accompanied her. She is one of the most uh, modest and self-effacing artists of that caliber. Lalit Rao's passion for her gharana was not limited to performances alone. She worked tirelessly 
to archive and document the work of stalwart musicians in an effort to preserve the rich legacy of the gharana The Ethnomusicology Department of the University of Washington invited Lalit to render several hundred traditional ragas and chizas of the Agra Atroli Gharana in a unique archival project. You know, there is a difference between people who learn uh, music in many different ways. Of course, they all do, uh, learn in many different ways. But there is a certain, what one likes to call, Talim Ka Gana. Now, Talim Ka Gana is different because the way the intonation is done shows a certain refinement and a certain delicacy of phrasing which is not easy to get except by um, instant feedback from one's teacher. And uh, that, at least to my way, ear, at that time, um, Lalit singing had. Sometime late 93, early 94, she started losing her voice. But we never thought it was so serious. And she had just planned a trip of France, Switzerland and England for a concert. Just before leaving for getting the visas and all, she suddenly lost her voice. Just couldn't sing. So we didn't know what, what was happening. So cancelled all the concerts. And she went into such a depression. I didn't know what to do. I tried to console her as much as I could. But how much? I mean, for her, music and singing was her life. And she lost her voice. What could she do? It was devastating for Lalit and Jaivant Rao, but series of trips to doctors in India and abroad landed her in London for her treatment under voice trainer Peter Harrison. What he said to me was, he said it's very simple because of your sinus, you've been using other areas for resonance. So the muscles that you should have used have degenerated. The muscles that you shouldn't have used have been overused, the whole system has collapsed. Many people have asked me, why do you consider Peter Harrison, whom you've seen only a few times as your guru? I believe that if you learn anything from anybody, they become equal to a guru. And he gave me back my voice, or he showed me the way to get my voice back. So she started giving concerts for about I think by the year 1999-2000 and especially after she got the excellent advice from our Dharam Guru, uh, our Swamiji, she got the courage to start singing. Swamiji has been a very big force in my uh, life since 1999 when he came to Delhi. And uh, in 2008 was the 300th tercentenary of our mat establishing of the mutt in and uh, we had planned a year-long celebration and uh, one of them asked me why don't you compose a rag in honor of the tur centenary now that was a challenge because i had never thought of composing never thought of making new bandishes because there are so many traditional bandishes that unless i you know learn all of them where is the need to compose new ones but it was an inspiration and uh, since it was for Swamiji, maybe, you know, I put my mind to it. And I composed a rag and called it Bhavani Shankar. But later I was inspired to compose one on the Guru. Karuna Mai Men Sat Guru Ke Rahe Mo Paradin Rain. So. <laughs> but I, I don't think I'll 
compose anymore. That was a moment of inspiration because of the Guru's uh, blessings. I'm happy with it. Those moments of inspiration led her to other pursuits that ensured the continuity of the gharana. I started an organization by name Smriti, where she, she was with me, associated with me, and she took over the organization and ran it so beautifully for almost 10 years. And she, she was such a strict and disciplinarian, the organization, we were able to conduct beautiful programs for almost 10 years. But then again, you know, you're impressed with the youngsters, you're groomed, you're not bad. ಜನರಸ್ ಆಗಿ ಬಹಳ ಎಲ್ಲ ತನ್ನ ಎಲ್ಲದನ್ನು ಕೊಟ್ಬಿಡ್ಬೇಕು ಹೇಳ್ಕೊಟ್ಬಿಡ್ಬೇಕು ಸಂಪ್ರದಾಯ ಉಳಿಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋದೊಂದು ಬಹಳ ದೊಡ್ಡ ಶಿ ಇಸ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಲಾರ್ಜ್ ಹಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ವುಮನ್ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಆಸ್ ಅ ಮ್ಯೂಸಿಷಿಯನ್ It has been a wonderful journey uh, of my musical career since I came under Lalit Ji because that's when I had given up my job and I had taken up music full time and uh, it's very difficult to find a guru and a performer in one musician and I see that in Lalit Aunty. She's an excellent performer and a great teacher. And not many students are uh, uh, very fortunate to have their gurus attending their concerts um, but in, uh, in our case, the students of Lalit Ji uh, they, whenever they are invited, they come to uh, every music concert of their students, sit right in the front and if there is a dhari, I think Jaivan Tankil prefers to sit there, squat there and then enjoy every single phrase uh, that we sing, which is a lot of encouragement. It is a very well established fact that our music is a Guru Shishya Parampara. Uh, it, is, it is an oral tradition and what a Guru gives to the student, no book can give you. No writing can give you, no CD can give you. So you can have CD learning, you can learn off tapes and learn, you know, you can do all that. But what a guru gives you is something that goes way, way beyond just the grammar of the music. And I think that what Lalitaka has imbibed is the essence of this Guru Shishya Parampara only because of her total and complete dedication to her guru. One of the things auntie told me is that you've got to put your priorities in order and very clearly for you work and your career is priority number one. Music might be your passion and it's wonderful that it's your passion uh, but it doesn't have to occupy the same level of importance in your life as it does in mine. So she made it very clear to me in that one session that you know she wants me to prioritize career uh, and other my, my other commitments before music and I think from a guru's point of view that was a wonderful thing for her to say because it would be so easy and I've seen people I've had past experiences when people expect you to you know, kind of drop everything for the sake of uh, what, what they're teaching you because they're very passionate about it but realistically speaking that can't happen and auntie always says that you know you make sure that you've taken care of all that and then you focus on music one thing I always remember, Auntie used to tell us that we need to compartmentalize different things. So when you're doing something, if I'm practicing, concentrate on that, give it 100%. When I'm taking care of my kids, do it 100%, give it 100%. And she has done it so well. So I'm sure, you know, there is a lot to learn from her. Not just music, but I need to learn all these th things from her as to how I need to strike a balance between my music career as well as my family and uh, I'm sure you know she is an inspiration to me and following her footsteps um, I can balance both I can strike the right balance she always tells us that you have to listen to every artist there is now in India I mean even abroad every artist has something special to give to the world of music 
and uh, you shouldn't miss that she never stops us from listening to anyone else she gives us records for every raga as as soon as we finish a rag she teach or in the midst of a rag she'll give us records to listen to it, it might be cr vyas it might be uh, bhinsen joshi from different gharanas she never stops us from listening to any other artist and that's why we have you know different memories associated with every rag when we sit down to practice when we are not in india those uh, we recollect those days when we spent every raga has a separate memory as long as i was performing i never really thought of teaching because uh, i thought it would take away from my uh, time of riyaz from my time of internalizing my music but then when i lost my voice and i couldn't perform anymore i still wanted to be in the uh, music field because it was something i'd spent my whole life in so um, i went to teaching as the uh, other alternative and uh, though i was a little uh, skeptical in the beginning i feel it has been as fulfilling a, a journey because before you teach you have to understand and you have to internalize what you have learned so my learning uh, process continues uh, and that has been very rewarding because you um, you become aware of so many things that you might not have noticed when you learned or when you were performing and it gives a, a more complete uh, attitude uh, to your music and uh, the second thing that has happened is i have been blessed with a wonderful group of students many of them are very talented all of them are very very dedicated and uh, they bring uh, into my life not only an extended family and a sense of uh, being wanted of being loved but they have also also enriched my life because in this musical journey that uh, i have been going along with them we have learned so many things together and uh, this takes me back to the time when i was learning and makes me uh, you know be very thankful to god because he has blessed me on so many uh, uh, so many folds if i can say use that word three wonderful gurus wonderful students a wonderful family and he has made me realize that performing is not the be all and end all of music music has many um, perspectives and outlooks and uh, i am eternally grateful for all the blessings that i have had lalit single minded dedication to her passion has been honored with lifetime achievement awards from prestigious music organizations like the bangalore gayana samaj putraj gawai samman and the Karnataka Kalashri Award in the year 2012 she has been featured in the french celebrity magazine match the moon ivarallu ondu baala vishishtavada guna enandre avaru chappaligalige haadu vyakti alla avaru music performance inna meerida ondu meditative quality inna nan notice madidde her music as being very uh, very upbeat very happy but then you know later uh, her uh, admirers for uh, sumati for example who heard her miya uh, kimal her was uh, was gripped by the way she could present uh, even the uh, even the more serious and the more uh, heavier they call i don't know if you can call them heavier the heavier ragas agra kharana mint men agra kharana mint fayas khan sahab agra kharana mint sort of voice like a sort of a, like a tiger in the jungle you know but uh, lalit was anything but that so it was the 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 interesting thing was the the fact that she was a woman singing with that same the same with the strength of the gharana bring it to a woman's voice uh, make it made it very interesting it was much more noticeable in the in the drutle you know uh, compositions impact of of i mean the 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 agra tradition is 100% there the impact of her musical prowess on her family is all too evident as the cultural legacy of this home continues through her grandchildren
So at the age of 11, in fact, we were in the US and the, uh, the tabla player didn't land up and neither did the harmonium player. So actually in a concert when I was 11, I actually accompanied my mother on stage with my dad on the harmonium. Uh, I did accompany her in some concerts. But it was more as a, as a family rather than a professional because I did not have the uh, time with all my activities to put in the hours of practice which is necessary to come up to the level of uh, perfection which is expected in Hindustani classical music. Yeah, I think we are lucky as a family. It's great for us and for the children to be immersed in the music. And I think it's a great way for them to grow and to learn. She's a great grandmother and it's great for them to be immersed in music and uh, uh, in and getting the real values. Uh, whatever she took on, uh, she was able to succeed. And I think uh, there were moments where I was not sure whether I was going to go through. I went to France, never sure of didn't speak the language, but right through the fact she told me that if you put up your mind, anything is possible and to persevere. And the fact of having always been dedicated to that, what she's done, is probably the one quality which has made me succeed and go, overcome most of the difficulties which I've ever had. Maybe it was destined that I should enter the world of music. And it, when I look back now, it seems that no matter uh, how many diversions I had, in the course of uh, my uh, life. Music always seems to have pulled me back, though it never uh, kept me in very tight rein. Let me go wherever, because maybe uh, Saraswati knew that no matter where I wandered, I would automatically uh, come back.